Well, I guess the secret's out, eh? If you saw my last video, you'll know that I bought a new bike for 2022. This isn't a bike to replace either of my current bikes, but rather a third addition to the fleet. And it's something I'm pretty excited about. Now, this is a really big bike, both literally in the sense that it weighs almost 38 freedoms, which is around 17 metric freedoms, and it's a really big bike metaphorically because I spent probably several hundred hours at my day job helping to design this bike with a team of very talented individuals. And it happened to win Pink Bike Spike of the Year award last year. Now, just to be crystal clear, my day job, although I love it, it's not affiliated with this channel, and everything that I'm gonna say in this video, or in any of my videos, is a personal opinion. So I don't speak on behalf of my day job, and I'm not gonna pretend to. But we're pretty excited about this, especially because it's, you know, the second bike of the year that we've gotten in the past few years. The first thing you're probably wondering is, what is that second chainring doing? And that's actually called an idler. And what the idler does is it allows you to separate chain forces from suspension forces, essentially reducing or eliminating pedal kickback. By controlling pedal kickback, you can move the main pivot to quite a high position, which allows for the rear wheel to take quite a rearward axle path, meaning that when it hits a bump, it moves rearward and also upward. So it gets out of the way of the obstacle, and it's able to carry speed through rough sections exceptionally well. So we might as well jump right into suspension. Out back, I'm running the stock Fox DHX2 factory coil, and this is the second coil bike I've ever ran, and the first one that I've really tried to fine tune and set up for my weight. So when Super Alloy Racing heard that I was building up a coil bike, then I was actually quite serious about it, they were very generous and decided to send me two coils, a 350 pound and a 375 pound. I've been running the 375 pound for now as I need to shed a little bit of winter weight and I've been riding some faster and shallower trails than usual. As summer comes, I'm excited to try both coils out and see what works best on the steep stuff that I love. Moving right along to the front, I decided to up fork already to a 180mm Lyric Ultimate. And the reason I did this is because I figured I might as well go all in. It's going to be a heavy bike, it's going to be a capable bike. I might as well make it as capable as possible. So I sold the 180mm Zeb that it came with and tried to find a Fox fork to match the shock, but nothing was in stock. But I found a Lyric and that will definitely do the trick. And I'm happy I found a Lyric over a Zeb because I'm quite light and the stiffness benefits that the Zeb has don't outweigh the weight penalty for someone like me. Now it's not quite suspension, but it is the next logical talking point, and that would be the dropper. 9.8 decided to sponsor the channel again for 2022 as you've seen their logos over the past few videos, and they sent me two of their 200mm 34.9 fall line droppers. I've been running some variation of the fall line since basically the channel started, and they've been super reliable, so I'm happy to continue running them. They're also quite light, which is an added benefit. I know I mentioned it before, but one of the things I really like about the fall line is that when the saddle connects to the head of the post, the fore and aft adjust for the, like, where it sits on the rails and the actual tilt angle of the saddle are two completely separate adjustments. So it makes fine tuning the exact saddle position you want super simple. To actuate the fall line post, 9.8 sent me their Digit 2.0 remote. And you've definitely seen this in the POV for the past couple of years, and it's hands down my favorite mode I've ever used. It's lightweight, it runs on a bearing, super smooth, and I've had zero problems with it. It's even on all three of my bikes. If I upgrade my brake levers, I will probably swap over to their iSpec yeah, like EV so adapter smooth. to clean up the cockpit. Nowhere near bottom. Speaking of brake levers, we might as well move on to brakes next. I'm still running the stock Shimano MT520 calipers with the BL501 levers. Now, these are probably the best bang for your buck brake that money can buy. They're pretty heavy, so if I had the money, I would probably upgrade them to something like an SLX or an XT, but these very much do the trick and they have the same power as the, all of the name brand levels. The only other disadvantages are that you need an Allen key to adjust the reach and they don't have an iSpec EV adapter. For rotors, I'm running a bit of a weird setup. Uh, bear with me. On the rear, I'm running the stock 203mm rotor from Shimano. It's a center lock, nothing special. And up front, I'm running a 180mm XTR rotor, which I had laying around in my closet. The reason I went with a 180 is because I have a 180 on my site, and it hasn't been a problem, and I didn't really want to have to go through the hassle of sourcing a post-mount adapter. Turns out, despite most people not being a fan of the reverse mullet brake rotor look, it works just fine. One thing that isn't mullet is the wheel set. 
So moving on to that, start with the front tire. I'm running the Spect Maxxis Asagai 2.5 Max Grip Double Down. And it's amazing how much grip this has. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I've, I've only run DHF tires because I think that's something that's consistent and really predictable for me. But this is next level grip. Now, the double down is quite heavy, and for someone like me, not really necessary on a front tire, so I'll probably go down to an EXO Plus or an EXO, but the max grip on this bike is something that I will struggle to move away from. Of course, I'm not a caveman, and I'm definitely running this tubeless at around 18 to 19 PSI. No insert. Moving back to the rear tire, I am also running the Spect Maxxis Dissector 2.4 inch double down with max grip. However, unlike the front tire, I think the double down is probably what I need here. On my site for the past few years, I've been running EXO to EXO Plus tires, and I find that those last about three weeks of hard riding, which is pretty wasteful, and I'm happy to have something more durable on the back. And we'll probably need to upgrade to a double down on that bike too. The max grip is of course insane, and something that I'll be looking for in the future on this bike, regardless of the rolling resistance penalty it comes with. I'm also running this tubeless, and I think it's around 22 PSI, and I've chosen to run a Cushcore XC insert, partly to save weight and mostly to save the wheel. The reason I say save the wheel is because that was one of the first upgrades I made when I bought this. I bought a Noble TR37 rear wheel laced to an Onyx Vesper hub, and of course the hub is fluorescent orange because I like colors and that's what they had in stock. As you know from my previous bike check, I think the Vesper is a phenomenal hub, being that it gives you instant engagement and is dead silent. So fantastic for technical moves and even better for filming quality. Now kind of close to the rear wheel is the drivetrain. And this should be a pretty quick section because I didn't really do a whole lot. So starting with the rear derailleur, I'm running the Aspect SLX derailleur. No complaints, it's just kind of a heavier version of the top tier stuff. Now for the cassette, I actually did upgrade because I had an SLX cassette sitting in my closet collecting dust, and it is a little bit lighter than the Dior that it came with. For the chain, I'm running the Dior chain that it came with, and although it probably won't be as durable as some of the higher tier chains, I'll just replace it when needed with something like an XTR. For cranks, this actually was a pretty quick upgrade because I had a Shimano XTR power meter crank sitting in my closet collecting dust. Yeah, it seems to be a trend here, doesn't there? And that is a significant weight savings over the Dior crank set that it comes with. And it also happens to have a power meter on it because that's who I am. <laughs> so this is a, obviously the crank that you saw on the site bike check and it's now migrated its way here. And attached to it, you will see a one-up switch chain ring. So I'm running a switch on all three of my bikes. It's been great, I've never had it creak. And then I can just run the same you know, Shimano switch setup with a 32 tooth round ring on all my bikes, which makes spares really easy and changing out chain rings super easy as well because you don't have to remove the spider from the crank. Now the 32 tooth ring is pretty aggressive, especially considering that my daily climb is some ridiculous steep gradient and it's not a light bike and it also has, you know, max grip tires. I think we're going to make it work, but I might go down to a 30 tooth just because Burke is insane. The last drivetrain component that I actually will rant about for a minute is the shifter. So this bike comes with an SLX and one of the first upgrades I wanted to do was upgrade this to XT because the XT shifter is not that much more expensive and it has the double release or whatever Shimano calls it technology where when you're going from a climb to a descent you can dump two gears at a time through the thumb paddle. This is really nice once you get used to it and I'm hoping to upgrade this shortly once they come in stock. Moving back to the crank for a second you'll see that I'm running five devs anodized red pedals and I have about five rides on them. They are probably the grippiest pedal that I've ever run and definitely my favorite because they're quite low profile. They run a standard, you know, socket head cap screw and they look fantastic. So excited to see how these fare in a durability test. Moving up to the cockpit now and we'll find two more quick upgrades that I decided to make. That would be the bar and stem combo. So 9.8 sent me one of their stout stems in a 40 mil length and a 35 mil bar bore and their stout top cap to match. I've run this stem on several bikes over the past few years and I've had no problems with it, so I'm excited to keep running it because it's quite light and in my opinion looks pretty good. They also sent over their titanium fastener kit, and as you know, nerds cannot resist titanium. For the handlebar, I decided to upgrade to 1UP's carbon bar and cut it down to 760mm width. I might go a little bit lower to 750, but 
right now with the heavy front wheel, I think the 760 gives me a little bit more leverage and makes the steering a little bit faster. Attached to the bar, you'll see I'm also running the one-up grips, which is a common theme among all three of my bikes because I quite like the touch points to be the same. And I don't know, that creates a sense of like familiarity for my brain. I'm, I'm weird, okay, just get over it. They also look good and are quite reasonably priced. And to finish off, we'll do a quick rapid fire round of all the other bits and bobs. So headset, stock. Bottom bracket, stock. Chain guide, stock. Idler wheel, stock. Uh, idler chain guide, stock. Saddle, I'm running a road saddle from, I believe it's a Norco Search, because it fits my bum really well. I don't need that much padding. It's pretty light and I have like eight of them. So <laughs> it's nice to have them all on all my bikes. And with that, I think we've covered pretty much everything. Now, obviously I'm, I'm sure I missed something. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to get to them as soon as possible. And just a special thank you to EMB, first of all, for helping me out with lots of service and letting me film this in their shop, which was super generous outside hours. Uh, and thanks to 9.8, 5Dev, and Super Alloy Racing for the components and the support of the channel this year. And with that, it's time to go ride. See you in the next one. All right, quick bonus clip just for you people who make fun of me for not owning a bike rack. Check this out. Two full bikes with front wheels off. Easy, no problem to fit in here whatsoever. I did this solo, it took like maybe two minutes. This car can fit way more than you think. And I will never buy a bike rack for it.